Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Developer Builder Series. My name is David Ha, and I'll be your guide as we build a mobile application together on the Now platform. We'll walk you through the very few first steps in building an update action function. Today, we'll show you how you can update an existing record in the form of updating some fields on an incident. After creating a new incident, we'll be able to use an update action to edit fields that I want, like short description, or I can change the urgency of an incident from low to high. Creating an update action function is a three-step process that involves creating an action item, building an action function, and then associating the action function to an applet. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new action item. Let's go ahead and open one up. We'll click create new. Let's name this edit incident. We'll leave this as an update because we want to update existing records. This will pull from the incident table. We need to make sure we check mark use current record as condition. This will make sure that when I update a record, it'll only update the record that I'm currently in and not all of them. And then once I'm done, I'll go ahead and submit. Now that we've created our action item, we need to create our item parameters. For this example, we're gonna create two, one for sort description and then one for urgency. Let's create our first one for sort description. And this is gonna be a string field. And then we'll create our second one for urgency. And this is a string field as well. Now that we're done creating our two item parameters, we can refresh the screen by clicking here. And now we see our two item parameters. To complete the action item, we now need to map our fields to our item parameters. For the field value, we'll bring in short description as well as urgency. We'll go ahead and add our two item parameters as a condition for the action item using this contextual reference value icon. We'll match short description to short description and then urgency to urgency. Now that we're done with our action item, we'll go ahead and click update. Now step one's complete. Let's move on to step two, which is building the action function. Let's open up a new function for actions. We'll click create new. We'll call it edit instant as well. The context can be record because we're, we want to update existing records. We'll select the action item that we just created, which is edit instant. And once we're done, we'll go ahead and submit. If we scroll down, we'll see two tabs for UI parameters and action parameter mappings. We first need to create UI parameters for the two fields we're passing to the action. So let's create the first one now for short description. We'll start off by naming this short description. We'll check mandatory to require user input. We'll leave the input type as text because we want this to be a freeform field. For the default value type, we'll change from none to source field. And this is so that existing value of the record will show up instead of blank when you edit the record. Let's fill the button parent table as incident. And then source field will be short description. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and submit. Now let's create our second UI parameter for urgency. We'll name this urgency. We'll check mandatory. The input type will change from text to list because we want to allow users to have a choice list to pick from. The table name is incident. The field is urgency. And we'll change the default value type from none to source field. We'll change the button parent table to incident. And the source field will be urgency. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and submit. Now that our UI parameters are done, we can refresh the screen by clicking here. And after we've created our UI parameters, we now have to map our UI parameters to the item parameters that we created earlier. So under the action parameter mappings tab, let's create new. We'll match the short description item parameter to the short description UI parameter. And then we'll do the same for urgency. Matching urgency to urgency. And now we can refresh the screen by clicking here. And now we're done creating our action functions. The very last step is to associate or update action function to an applet. 
For this example, we're gonna update existing records on a list applet with active instance. So let's open up active instance applet. We're gonna associate the edit instant action to the swipe function on the primer screen, as well as the top menu of the details screen. Since we're editing specific records, these are the only places where this will work. So let's go into primary screen functions. We'll associate our edit instant into swipe. We'll label this edit instant. It's gonna be a left swipe and then we'll select our action. And then we'll go into the details and then we'll associate to the top menu as well. And once we're done, we can go ahead and save and test this on our device. We can go ahead and refresh the home screen. We'll click into Mobile Builder, into Active Instance. And if we scroll down, you'll see that I reported that my VPN isn't working. After creating this incident, I realized that it was actually a network issue and I need to escalate the urgency to high. If I wanted to, I can use a swipe action to edit the incident or I can also drill in, go to the top menu and edit here as well. We'll change the short description to the network is down and we'll change the urgency from low to high. Now you'll see the short description that urgency has changed for this instant. And in just minutes, we created our very first update action function on the fly. This wraps up our quick introduction to update action functions. Thank you for watching.